which uh, it's the priest from Bear. What's his name? Father, Father Keith. Father Cow. Do you know? Was he the one who did the um, the Santa Rita thing? It was a couple weeks ago. Was that him? The mystery. Yeah. Uh huh. Okay. So will we have music? Huh? Will we have music on Thursday? Yeah, in the store. Right. When they um, that's when they start the guitar. Mm -hmm. Start with them. Uh, and I, I don't go for it. So I'm kind of like, like, do you play the organ when you were eleven? That's. That's pretty good. I had a lesson with her sister and my sister in law, but I ended up with the piano.
But uh, yeah, she wants to come and see that. And then I was telling her that she wants to come in. Right, the, the ears that I gave to Pietro, that's what I said. That I moved to Bayard, and, and it's the truth. Uh, I came back to Fierro again because I, I couldn't get adjusted. I, really? I would cry at night. I wasn't at ease. I wasn't. Mijo, I was here. Well, gosh, you lived all your life up here. Born? I was born and raised here, so I, and I had to move like that. What couldn't you get adjusted to in Bayard? Uh, Probably the noise. Yeah, you know, like the. So close. We used to live right below there. And, Actually, when you move like that, mm. everybody around you, you don't know. They're yeah. total strangers. So the second time I went back to Bay Area, I went to the... And little, gradually, it. little by little, you, you get to know. Each other yeah. And, you know, feeling more at ease. Yeah. Hard. It's hard. Yeah. Did you have friends there that were from Baird? As, I mean, from Fierro as well? Huh? Did you have friends in Baird that were from Fierro as well? well? A lot of, uh, of yeah. us from Fierro are there. Yeah. We live in the same section in Baird yeah. area in Baird. But Hilda lives just behind us. Oh, yeah? Mm -hmm. Lico Sr. never got adjusted, though, did he? No. <laughs> That's Mary Who's that? husband. Uh -huh. yeah, they, they lived right behind us in Baird. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. Yeah, it's... So did they take pictures when they came? The the people from Sun News? They took a whole They did? Oh, good. Inside the church. Oh, good. Well, inside of the crowd. Oh, that'll be fun. It'll be pretty. <laughs> <laughs> There's thousands of people go to that Chimayo now. You know, I was up in Montana, Which, I saw Johnny's in Missoula, and I, I was there at a store, and I saw this Chimayo, and I asked this guy, I says, are you from around? Oh, no, we're here, but we go there every year. Wow. Every year, they were from Montana. You see that this year, carried it all this time. They uh -huh. had that uh, deal. Yeah. Usually they just had a deal there. No, they covered 10 or 15 minutes of it huh. this year. Uh -huh. that, that and they would show the, the, the people walking in procession and then the, the uh -huh. policemen uh, making sure that they were safe. Because <laughs> one year they ran over some Yeah. <laughs> really? They, they, they got to, Is there uh, too many people? But th this, uh, well, well, the main thing on this is People just, uh, I, uh, like Tony was saying, you know, maybe later on we can cut like the branch of tree, those trees right there close, put a table or two and people could come and, and sit, yeah. you know, because and, and, like, it's like, really nice yeah. and peaceful up here. Yeah. It is. Even with the mine going, it's still, it's got its serenity. Mm -hmm. it does. Like right there, uh, I remember years the back they had an old table and benches and mm -hmm. Yeah, that would be nice. Uh -huh. Right in front, right here. And people, you should be surprised with the people that come, especially to visit the crowd in the back. Mm -hmm. Well, the church is closed anyway. But uh, from Arizona, from California, from different parts. I was At up one? The other day, excuse me. Uh -huh. I was just, it was Arizona, California, and Nevada. Uh -huh. and, you know, there was two or three yeah. from each, mostly Arizona, California, uh -huh. but a few from Nevada. You know, a word gets around. A lot of it is is the second generation, but they it just they've been told or know that their parents or grandparents, you know. But and, and then a lot of older people. The, the Ramirez's, you remember the Ramirez's, Mandy Ramirez, and all them. Yeah. And then my, my uh, uncle Ignacio's wife and sons. They sent money to yeah. help us with it. They never have forgotten their church. Yeah. Last year, my aunt came and had my She gave him $500 to her because we want to fix the roof on the house. And she said that she was going to donate that money, but it was for Fierro, for Fierro Church, mm -hmm. so we could fix it. Huh. Yeah. That's, yeah. But the, even from, from Arizona, like the Castillos, mm -hmm. 
they helped. <laughs> so they yeah, have they have a They are right it's still Saint Anthony. <laughs> Saint Anthony's still Yeah, and I bet there's gonna be a lot of people show up this year. Yeah, I think so. Because so it's really the big. only thing I think next year they're saying that five is too early, they get home from work and they yeah. don't have enough oh, time okay. to uh -huh. So yeah, if it it's on a... 5.30, it would have been better. Or 6. So I guess we're going to have to work. Yeah, it's going to be at 5? At 5. Oh, okay. The mess is at 5, uh-huh. Oh, I'm glad I, 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 I got that straight. I thought they said 6, but no, I'm going to be at 4.30. No, it's at 5. Okay. I think the procession will be, well, right after the... Oh, you're the talking mess. the church. Okay, and then the procession. The mess. Yeah, the one, the mass. The okay. mess is at 5. Okay. And the procession. We want to see the procession. Oh, okay. yeah. But the church gets crowded. I, I uh -huh. guess it's filled up all the time. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's real nice. Yeah, that sure added a lot to it. Ah, uh, we were just going to put the two ties there, uh -huh. Adelina, but, but I'm glad we put four. That way it's, it, it gives you more space there. Yes, and they won't be... Uh, and they won't be parking up against the gosh, steps. Because it was hard for them to be... Yeah, yeah, I remember last year, uh, uh, and in fact, I wasn't parked close, but I was sitting on the step. I, I couldn't hardly climb up the, the deal there, you know. Uh, so, no, this would be a lot nicer, you betcha. And I see they got the tin put up. I see they got it wired, and they got rope there. But Tony uh, was going to donate Tony on the Zola. But I think later on they want to put some screws in like you were talking about right there yeah. and, and put it on there permanent, and that way they won't have to. The chairs, see the two chairs on mm -hmm. the side over there? there? Wherever you see this, these are from the uh, cacti that grows Which? all around Fort Beard and in Arenas Valley, uh -huh. you know, the cactus, the, the yucca. Is it the yucca? Yeah, yes. yeah it looks like. Those are dry yuccas. Oh, that's pretty. That's where he gathered all that material huh. to, to make. And when was that? Do you know that he... Oh, God. When was Father all year? You visited that place, didn't you? I never did get to visit. You know how how long ago that was? I haven't been to this now. 1940s? My mother was killed in 1950. We used to go. Middle 40s. Late 40s. Okay. No, not in the news. Do you go to the um, St. Anthony's Festival? It's up at the church on Thursday. They have a procession and everything. The Fierro Church. Yep. You were? Ah, that's funny. They were talking today about altar boys. Who were, who were the altar boys? What's your name? Hmm. care of. She used to go into the mountains and pick up some nopales and uh, 
pine nuts, awarices, anything that we, that, that's how we grew, grew up in. Maybe the three I'm so healthy at my age, you know. At my age, everybody's supposed to have uh, arthritis, diabetes. And my, my mother never suffered from those uh, illnesses that, 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 are, that the people, old people are afflicted with, you know. And, uh, but most of these people, I got to know the area real well, all the way from here to Pinos Altos. Got to know the people. And, uh, and every, every year I make an annual visit to, to come and visit my beloved New Mexico. Remember some of the good things and some of the bad things. A lot of happy memories. And, uh, but that's what makes people a good citizen, you know, when you, when you go through. You suffer a little bit, you know, but that's what makes people a good citizen, you know. I was in the service five and a half years. I had a ship sunk under me. But fortunately, uh, 650 people got drowned or killed because it was torpedoed by Japanese in the Gilbert Islands in November of 1943. And I escaped because I had volunteered for duty on, on the island to patrol the island. That's how I escaped, you know. So there must have been something for me, you know. I was baptized in this little church right here when I was little. Oh, my mother came from Mexico uh, in 1924. I know I don't know precisely what month she came in, but she had three little girls with her: Felipa, Carlota, and Emma. She had them in tow, and she came across the border. And we came directly here to Fierro because my, we had an aunt that was living here, and uh, and that's where I I kind came to be born here because my mother was pregnant with me at the time, you know. and I was born here. And, uh, not a, like I say, it was, it was hard life. But, uh, and, uh, and, and our country was just barely growing up, you know. And then during the Depression, many people, uh, uh didn't, uh, the, the truck used to welfare full of oranges, but they, they used to bypass us because people were a <laughs> little like prejudice against us, you know. And, uh, but we didn't care that. We, we, we thought it was part of life, you know. We, we never did starve. We were hungry, no question about it. But, uh, I went to school barefoot at the time, you know. In fact, I came to, I, I didn't show up in school one time because I didn't have any shoes, you know. It was annoying. And, uh, Mrs. Watson, everybody knew Mrs. Watson. She was, she was a beautiful teacher, you know. I wish, I wish the teachers of today were as dedicated some of those teachers of the past, you know. She she and another teacher, Mrs. Stober, went over and got me a, a pair of shoes. Probably cost them about a dollar and a quarter. But a dollar and a quarter in those days were about $25, $30 today, you know. So pretty good pair of shoes, you know, high tops, you know. And those were my shoes, you know. And uh, and then I tried to go to school again. You know. But uh, but that's the way uh, the country go, or the people go, you know. Uh, I think that um, my mother bought a, a house right next to the bridge, just on the other side of the, the bridge at Point that we used to call it. I think she paid fifty dollars for that, and she, because she was working uh, cleaning houses, you know, for twenty five cents a day, twenty five cents a day. But she cleaned clean two or three houses, so then she made about what seventy five, say fifty seventy five cents a day, you know. And uh, so that was that was pretty good money, you know. I mean. Not a whole lot of money, but but anyway, uh, with the help of others, we survived. And I'm. Uh, Did you have to um, were you here when they had to haul the water from the spring? Oh yes, I had some. Effort. We used to. Well, actually, um, we we hauled water from. But, but I don't remember. I was too little to remember how we got the water from the spring over to our house. Apparently, um, my my mother managed. To, somebody managed to get uh, water for us and wood for us. There used to be an old man that, that lived uh, down here. His name was uh, no, Jose Medina. I think this girl, this girl lived right next to, next, next to them. And, um, and he used to bring wood and he used to give us some wood. Chop it up for us for my mother. And that's, that's how my mother cooked up. But, uh, what else can I say, you know? Really? Do you, um, do you have any 
um, do you remember going to the church? No, I was I was very little, and I was very little, and uh, and uh, to, to to remember hardly anything, you know. But uh, then my <laughs> my my mother converted to being a Baptist, as I mentioned before, you know, and, and she was so proud and so and so highly religious and she became a very knowledgeable in the Bible you know something that in those days people didn't didn't know anything about this, about the scriptures but my mother did in fact I, I myself had two years of of um, special theology at, uh, at um, Occidental College in Eagle Rock California because I wanted to be a, a pastor but I guess things didn't work out that way it just why I didn't have a calling, or maybe I didn't. It wasn't for me, you know, like everything else. You know. <clears throat> but uh, my love for these people, uh, it never, never has uh, minimized. I've always loved them to the utmost. And I have a lot of people that I, these people that are living on here, they're very trustworthy. You can, you can trust them. You can trust them all the way through. Oh yes, yeah, 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 I've got, yeah, right after she bought that house for $50, she was paying, I don't think, I don't even, I don't think she ever even finished paying it, you know, because that, right after that, she bought the house, the people that were on the house, that little, just, just a, probably a one, one room house, okay, we made it a kitchen and a bedroom and everything else there, you know, and maybe a little out, outhouse out in the back, you know, and I was little, I can even, I, I just, I was just passing by right a few minutes ago and I told my wife, I think our house, my first house where I was born, right there, you know. And then uh, we we eventually my, my aunt Erminia uh, Erminia had built a house right over here, and that's where um, when she moved to Central and we moved into that house. So we had a pretty good little house then, you know. And then um, my aunt after we moved out of there, I think Ursula Paz bought that house. Ursula Paz bought that house, and I think before that I think uh, one of the Perez. But 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 uh, lived in that house. Anyway, the, that house was very. It's not it's not there anymore, you know. But we lived close to the Arcieros, the Martinez. Inc- incidentally, Chuque Arciero, Jesus Arciero, was a deputy here in he's here in the, here in Fierro, and him and I are only about m- maybe two weeks apart. We we're born the same year, you know, and. Uh, my mother used to breast, breastfeed both of us. <laughs> he probably doesn't remember that. And if, if he sees this video, he'd probably be embarrassed, you know, but they shouldn't be because breastfeeding a baby in those days was only natural, you know. And, uh, my mother, my mother was healthy. His mother was a little bit sick at the time, you know. She eventually died in, I think, what time? 42. He got zero. But, uh, my mother was healthy in spite of the hearts being so poor. We were, we were all healthy. And uh, maybe that's the reason, eh? <laughs> we be on a diet, don't eat so much. Maybe that's what makes us sick, you know, so we eat so much, you know. We we have so much in abundance, you know. Do you realize that that we throw more food here in America than that the whole world could, could, could live on? We throw so much food in the restaurant, in our own gatherings. It goes into the garbage. But uh, we live to be poor. There's nothing wrong with being poor, you know. As long as you're clean, clean-minded, that's what counts, you know. Thankful of what you are, thankful of what you have, content, you know. But when you accomplish too many, too many things in this life, you, after you, you can accomplish so much. I know a lot of people. That's what drives people crazy, you know. They accomplish so much, they accumulate so much, so many goods and property and money, and then they have kids that don't, and young kids nowadays don't have. They have different lifestyles than we do, you know, nowadays. You know. I remember when, when we used to wear shoes there, tennis shoes were a buck and a half. Now, you, you, kids nowadays would be uh, the life laughing stuff of, of their high school if they went with, with the tennis shoes we wear, pay $20 for. They want to pay 150 you know, so somewhere in there, you know. And, uh, but uh, it's not what you have. It's, uh, it's to be content with what you have. 
That's, that's it's my philosophy in life. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, people that I talked to said that even though they were so poor when they were there, they had very fond memories of going there just because the, the people were so good. Yeah. yeah. Why did you move to Arizona? Oh, yeah, because of the mines we got to El, El Peru. That was one of the, the main... A uh, uh, lot of the mines were getting kind of slow. A lot of them were, sh were shutting down. And, lot of the, and, and some of the big uh, bosses were opening up a, a big mine in, in gold, or they were reopening up a mine of gold that was in the early 40s, in the early 30s. So they... Uh, yeah, in Arizona. So that's why we moved over there. The miners were looking for, for work. And that's why we moved over to to Arizona. Somehow or other, that was that turned out to be probably the best move we ever made, you know, because we, we, we at least we had something to eat, you know, we always had something on the table, you know, in Arizona. And from the, in Kingman, we, when we, when the mine school closed in, in, in Gold Road, we moved to Kingman. By that time, I was old enough to join the service and uh, joined the service and came out in 1948. And uh, just stayed there, stayed in California, and uh, got married there, had kids there, and everything else, you know. It's very, very interesting. Um, did you move to, did you follow the mines? Who in the no, mines? I didn't work. I was, I was too young to. And your mother, she No, she just cleaned houses. She, she was just an ordinary labor she, she was no uh, she 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 was good right really right she was not not she was very because uh, in a lot of those days anybody went to fourth grade it was equivalent to high school nowadays you know but nowadays you take a lot of these high school graduating college they don't even know who the governor of new mexico is yeah really they don't know who the senator is they don't know nothing who's the biggest state and forget it they don't know but this is the uh, that's why I said, remember, well, the, school, the schools of yesterday, the teachers of yesterday, were so loyal and so dedicated. They weren't looking for, like the teachers of today, union and wages and how much money am I going to get, you know. They wanted to educate <laughs> Respect. Okay. <laughs> What's your name? <laughs> Antonio Gonzalez. And you grew up in Santa Rita? Yes. 1948, I was born, and I went to school, solid school, and then I went to high school at Cobra. And I used to uh, be an altar boy at this church when 1961. Father Morgan was the, the pastor at that time. He used to come and, I used to come and serve Mass. Twice a month, something like that. And San Lorenzo, Santa Rita, Santa Rita Church, uh, San Jose, it's over there in Sherman. Uh, San Lorenzo, and some, you know, with members. And uh, not in Bayer, we never went to Bayer. Bayer had a father at that time. But we, I used to come over here in the uh, Holy Family in Hanover. And uh, that's it. I mean, I mean, I was, I was into a devotion, you know, of uh, serving Mass and, and I must say, I was trying to uh, do as many Masses, serving so many Masses. I wanted, I wanted to get, uh, <coughs> they used to call it, uh, a pin. After you serve so many messes, uh, uh, you could be the head altar boy or the sacristan. Sacristan means that you could touch the chalice, uh, serve the wine, uh, set up, uh, the sacraments for the, for the, for the mass. And that's it, I made And then, Shiva. After that, I just got into, uh, 
with Father Morgan and Sorry, uh, it got me more in, involved in uh, in uh, what's going on in the church because they changed they changed it from Latin to uh, English, and uh, they wanted to get the people more involved in the mass. So I had, to, you know. Well, not only me, but everybody was, you know. And then, you know, being a Chicano, everybody was saying, that, I mean, nobody wanted to speak English. They're blushy like me, you know. So anyway, he made me a lector, a le lectern. And so I had to go there and read the epistles. And he, he would say the gospel, but... He, he, he broke me. He broke me in. You know that that you have to go out there and and then some of those words in the Bible. I couldn't even. I couldn't even pronounce them. I couldn't even. He didn't even know how to tell me to say them. You know. And then you go there and and you just practice that night. And then and then you go in the mass. I had the ten thirty mass or five thirty mass in the morning. And no practice, and you just go and try and say some of those words, and you're going Ephesians, or uh, yeah, there's a there's a, a word that I couldn't even I could I haven't even been able to say it yet, but I'm not I mean I'm not even gonna bring it up because <laughs> but anyway he brought me out into that, and then he told me it's a high mass, and a high mass is all. Oh, Three candles on one side and all three candles on the other side. That's a high mass. That's six candles up there. They're lit. So you have to sing the <laughs> the epistle. And can you imagine singing, you know, epistle and when those words and everybody's going, "Hey, Chicano," you know, because of your Spanish or English, or whatever. I mean, it was a it was a growing up experience, but it also gave me a lot of uh, faith in my in my community, my my church, my my fellow brethren. I mean, you, I can't call them brethren, but you know, they're supposed to be there. I mean, they're supposed to be there for me. I'm supposed to be there for them. But sometimes, the day Saint Anthony's Day is my patron saint. I did it because I want to do it. Nobody told me, hey, walk away, let's go. It just comes from you. I walked because I wanted to walk. I mean, I could have, I could have driven up here. I, I uh, walked from San Rita. From the cross, you know what? San Rita up here. Oh, it's only a four or five mile walk. I walked to San Lorenzo, San Lorenzo. That's 11 miles. But it's... When you, when you have Jesus with you, I mean, when you accept Him, you're not, you're not telling Him how to, what to do. You're, you're accepting Him in your life. Uh, it's like He's helping you out with your life. You just... It feels good. I mean, it makes you really feel good. It makes you. You know how. I, mean, I don't know if you know what I'm saying or can understand. But it, but it feels, you know, makes you feel good inside. I mean, I don't know if you've ever been there. But it's a, it's an experience. I would I wouldn't put it away from anybody. I mean, everybody should do it. I mean, not for Saint Anthony, but there's other saints. Saint Lawrence he comes out. Fatima. Saint Vincent. Um, what do you know about? What can you tell me about? Saint uh, St. Anthony, <laughs> he's, uh, 
He loved Jesus so much that uh, it, it was such a special love that he, you know, he just came to him. And then they say the girls that pray to St. Anthony will find their, their man or whatever. And they say that men that pray to him will find their women in a peace, I mean, a, no, no arguments afterwards after they, you know, meet each other. But to me, uh, St. Anthony is that he could get, you know, in a conversation with the Lord, even though he was young. I mean, that he was a baby. Well, not a baby, but a child. And that he could, you know, talk. That the Lord could talk to St. Anthony and he could comprehend what he's telling him. And St. Anthony could do that. I mean, comprehend what he's, what they're telling him. I mean, St. Anthony has a lot of words up there. And one of them is, don't, don't, you know, don't hurt nobody. Either verbally, physically, or, uh, you know, just by ignoring them or something like that. Be, be, you know, be nice. Was it still, when you were growing up here, was it still a company town? Did it, you know, I mean, did it have the feel of sort of, did you guys have, uh, you probably, you rented your house from the company probably? Well, no, the house was ours. Uh -huh. So when my grandma moved out, we had to knock the house down. Uh, we did pay for the use of the land, which is what they called pesos. I think it was like a couple of dollars a year, but we did have to pay something. Uh, and did you, uh, did you guys have, did you have to haul your water still? Um, we always did. Yeah, and I, when I think back of how much uh, whoever brought us the water charged, I think it was $3 a barrel, and now that I live you know, with water in the house, it's not, it's not that much to use it for a whole month. <laughs> I said, wow, what exploitation. Oh, I can't think of anything right now. Probably when I get home, I'll think of something. I do remember my uh, my school years with great fondness. We we had wonderful teachers. Probably because uh, anything that they taught us was was valuable. Being in a small community, if they brought books, if they brought music, it was it, we enjoyed it. I, I remember Mrs. Overturf, who I had for two years. She taught us how to play little band instruments. Uh, how, what was your teacher's name? Mrs. Overturf. Over, Overturf? Overturf. Overturf. Okay. I've, um, I found some really neat uh, oral history tapes at the public library, a couple of different um, couple of different teachers talking about their years teaching in Seattle. Is that right? Really neat, really neat who, stuff, yeah. Who are those teachers? Um, there's a, a Bessie Overton. And, uh, uh, Josephine Overturf was was one of my favorite teachers. Her husband was dean of the college, Dean Overturf. And uh, at the end of the year, she would take the whole class to Silver City, to her house, so we could eat there. It was a, it's a very memorable event. And uh, she gave me a little plastic pin for Valentine's Day, which I still have. I, I wear it from time to time on Valentine's Day. <laughs> um, so, how about how many students were you guys all? Was it sort of all one one class? And there were two grades in each class. It was a small school. Kindergarten was by itself, and I remember first grade by itself, and the second and third were in one room. So we had Mrs. Overturf. Third and fourth we had Mrs. Applehands. Uh, wait a minute, fourth and fifth. Third and fourth together, fourth and fifth together. 
fifth and uh, sixth and seventh were together, I believe. I can't remember. That was that was school a long time ago. <laughs> yeah. And then, um, uh, what was your last year? What was the last year of school at Fierro? Eighth grade. Eighth grade as well. We had eighth grade graduation. My graduating class was six students. <laughs> there were six of us. It was uh, Salvador Dones, uh, Julia Martinez, Dolores Andasola, Jesse Betancourt, and myself. Was that your great job? Yeah, and it was so small that they brought the, the um, Pino Saltos class, I believe. Cliff, Cliff or Pino Saltos, there were two boys, so they, were, they came and graduated with us so they wouldn't have to graduate alone. <laughs> wow. Oh, what did you guys do for graduation? Nothing! <laughs> Just a little reception after the graduation. I remember I had to give a speech. I was a salutatorian. Uh, Salvador Dones was a valedictorian. Now, that was a competitive team there. Were eight, 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 eight. <laughs> yeah, we had small classes. Did you um, did you go up to the cross for that graduation? Yeah, we used to go every year when uh, school ended. Those that passed got to go up the hill. Those that flunked had to go home. Why? Like you said, it should have been the other way around. The punishment should have been. The <laughs> I, I talked to different people who some people said they buried they bury a rosary underneath the cross. Some people say you put your put a penny in, you stick a penny in there and carve your Everybody had a different promesa. Mm -hmm. the, whatever you wanted to do. We would either pray or we would just go up and, and uh, look down and count our blessings that we had passed. <laughs> I remember this year that I came to the Fiesta de San Antonio and I saw Charles Drake and he said, my mother is here. And I said, Charles, I have not seen your mother in over 40 years. And she said, oh, she's sitting right there in the car. Mrs. Drake was the school principal. And I went over and she looked exactly as I remembered her. And I said, do you remember me, Mrs. Drake? Uh, you look familiar, but uh, 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 give me your name. And I said, I'm Cecilia Rodriguez. Oh, yeah. She says, I remember you. You were always so studious. <laughs> she remembered. <laughs> but she hasn't changed a bit at all. And I was telling her that everybody that graduated from here made something of themselves without we. Oh yeah, we all. I was telling her that we were all we were all achievers. There was nothing else to do. No television. Um, well, we went to Kobe, you know, and then they put us in those accelerated classes. That's what they used to call them. And they were, you know, we didn't know what to do, you know, because we didn't think we were that. <laughs> That's what happened Mark. to me. I, I was in all the accelerated classes my freshman year. In Thelma, and, and yeah. all of us, you know, they put us in accelerated classes because we were so. Well, it was, yeah, but it, it was culture shock that, that did us in. It's a different, different composition of the class. Large classes, we were used to small classes, a lot of individual attention. Were the, uh, were the teachers mostly white there at Kobe then, or was it a pretty good mix? All the teachers here were white. All the teachers were white. Yeah, that wasn't the problem. <laughs> when we went to Kobe, when we went to Kobe, it was not the teacher. It was just a different environment.